Jeff Wickwire is an author, radio teacher, and beloved lifelong pastor of Turning Point Church in Fort Worth, Texas. He holds a doctorate in biblical studies and has grown his ministry into a thriving local assembly. He ministers from a place of vulnerability. And pastor Wickwire uses his incredible testimony to glorify God. He's here today to offer his unique perspective and insight on this taboo topic. Can a Christian be demon possessed? Stay with us. Well, we're back with Pastor Jeff Wickwire from Turning Point Church. And Jeff, I want to uh, welcome you to the program today. I can call you Jeff because you happen to be my brother-in-law. You're married to my sister. <laughs> you know, who, who would have ever thunk it, but that's what happened. Right. And so here we are. Here we are. And All these... It's great to be on Inside Voice, it, Brenda. I'm and looking it's... forward to it. It's going to be a great show. Awesome. It's so great to have you here. And you have a wealth of information. You're a theologian. And uh, so I really want to t discuss a topic that's kind of hot right now. Uh, and that is the whole uh, kind of centering around demonology and demons and uh, you know, the, this world of deliverance. I mean, as a matter of fact, there's a, a movie that's just come out called Come Out in, in the Name of Jesus, I believe, or in Jesus' Name. And uh, I have not seen the movie. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie, but um, I would really like to discuss the, um, I, I'd like your, your thoughts on how we get a little bit uh, twisted our, in our perspective of what demons actually do you know, is there any authority to, for a Christian to be demon-possessed? Well, that's a great question, and it is a, an incredible controversy right now in the church, primarily because of a group of folks that have just begun um, casting devils out of Christians online. You, you'll, you can see it on YouTube. Mm. You can see it on different social media platforms. They're going on there and supposedly carrying these professing Christians through deliverance from demons. In other words, demons coming out of them. So mm -hmm. we're talking about a demon that was actually residing within a professing born again Christian. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has become more and more popular. Uh, I think social media has absolutely fueled it a lot. But now this movie has come out and it's, uh, the main folks behind it, uh, Pastor Greg Locke, uh, Isaiah Saldivar, there's a few others. Uh, they're the main uh, personalities involved in this. And in this movie, it's supposed to be a documentary. Okay. I have not seen it. I've seen clips and I've read the gist of what is in it. Mm -hmm. And it is all about the need for born again, post Pentecost, spirit mm -hmm. indwelt Christians mm -hmm. being delivered of demons, having demons cast out of them. And it's happening, as a matter of fact, at the end of this documentary, uh, Greg Locke comes on and gives an invitation for people to be, you know, oh. delivered. Okay. And in theaters, secular theaters across America, you know, people are starting mm -hmm. to scream and cry out and oh, wow. I don't want to be gross, but throw up. And um, all these things are happening in the theaters. And so it's becoming front and center uh, in, in a lot of different places in America now, because I think this movie premiered on 2,000 different theaters. Hmm. So the, the, the question has become the number one theological question of the hour, can a Christian be demon-possessed? Right. And so I, I think we need to, you know, look at some words like possession versus oppression. And uh, if you don't mind, Brenda, I'll just explain the difference please. and then yeah, please. Uh, we'll converse. But possession is the Greek word daimonizomai. All right, you hear Dame, uh, Damon in there, Damien. You know, Hollywood produced the movie called Damien, Antichrist. Yeah. Well, that comes from the Greek word daimonizomai, mm. and that means possessed. Mm. Now, the other word is oppressed. And the question is, are these Christians simply oppressed or are they genuinely possessed? Because if you're possessed, we know from the Bible what that looks like. Yeah. You can read in Mark 5 where the 
Gadarene demoniac, the, the terribly possessed man who was dwelling in Gadara. And the Bible says of him that uh, he had his dwelling among the tombs, so he had a, he had a fascination with death. Uh, nobody could bind him, so he had superhuman strength, not, not even with chains. So this guy was spooky strong. I mean, you, you, could, you would chain him, and he would simply break the chains like they were made of butter. It goes on. He had often been bound with shackles and chains. Chains had been pulled apart by him like some hmm. first century Hercules or Samson, and the shackles broken in pieces. And nobody could tame him, so he was incorrigible. He was, it was impossible to bring this man under control because he was completely out of control. And it says day and night, what a terrible picture here. He was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. So he was self-destructive. You know, we read so much today about teenagers right. cutting themselves. Yes. Uh, well, here you have a first century cutter and this, this poor possessed man was cutting himself. And um, so you just look at him and he is this, uh, this individual who's totally out of control. And when you talk about daimonizomai, that's what possession means. Mm -hmm. You're not owned by God. Mm -hmm. You are totally under the control of a demon spirit where you, you have no more life. Correct. You go where the demon tells you to go. You do what the demon tells you to do. You are utterly under the power of these demon spirits. Now, oppressed is different. We could say, for instance, that Saul was oppressed. The Bible says that an evil spirit would come and he would experience emotional, uh, psychological torment. Mm -hmm. But nowhere are we told in the Old Testament that he was possessed, he mm. was oppressed, right. he, was, he was tormented. And only when David would play the harp and bring in some worship music would this evil spirit lift off of him. Uh, but it didn't, it never says it came out of him. Mm -hmm. It says it just left him, it, that it, it, it uh, was driven away. Sort of like the New Testament verse, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Right. That's not talking about daimonizomai, that's talking about oppression. Mm -hmm. We could say Job was physically oppressed, mm. terribly afflicted in his body by the devil. We know it was the devil because the devil got permission to do it. But he was physically tormented, but never are we told there was anything in him. Mm -hmm. It was not within him. It was uh, coming at him from without, and it afflicted his body. That's so good. So Christians can be oppressed, Brenda, uh, but nowhere, and I'll just stop with this and then we can, we can converse, but if you look at that Greek word daimonizomai and you follow it through the four gospels, um, it's only found a few times, mm. but guess what? At the end of the gospel of John, the end of the gospels, after that, it's nowhere to be found. Mm. It's nowhere in the New Testament. Wow. Because nowhere are we shown a post-Pentecost a born again, spirit indwelt Christian mm -hmm. being possessed, daimonizomai, mm -hmm. never. It's no longer mentioned after the Gospel of John. Yeah, that's really good. And I love how you mentioned Job. Uh, it's such a good example. Uh, my concern with this whole emphasis on deliverance and, you know, that word deliverance can mean a lot of things. It doesn't have to be uh, demon possession. And, you know, we live in a world of, uh, wouldn't you agree, of, of a lot of hurting people. So, you know, there's a lot coming to the table here. And when you encourage something, yeah. people can manifest a lot of emotions that can look like perhaps demonic activity. And I listen, I understand that the demonic is real and that possession mm -hmm. is real. I am not discounting that. But I have a, a concern whenever we put something like that on, say, a young person that's cutting because, let's say, maybe they've been abused and there's a psychological, um, you know, manifestation. There's, there's, there's psychology involved. And this is where I feel like in, in the church, we oftentimes will dismiss the psychological side of where God wants to he heal us and the mindsets that, that we're operating in, which are where strongholds come from. So, you know, what are your thoughts 
in terms of um, how our emotional wounds, let's say drugs, for instance. I know your testimony touches on that. We can talk about that. Uh, you know, how these things can all play a part and how does the demonic work through those things to perhaps torment someone and what is the deliverance element that would come into play there? Yeah, um, here we're talking about emotional healing. You know, I think of Isaiah 61 where it says, uh, here's Isaiah prophesying the, of the coming Messiah and he's, he, he lists the various ministries that Messiah Jesus would uh, undertake. Mm -hmm. And he says one of them is to bind up the broken in heart uh, and proclaim liberty to the captive. So the binding up the broken in heart has to do with emotional healing. Now again, we have to be careful because if somebody, when I call on the name of Christ, for instance, I was saved as a juvenile in juvenile home. I was locked up and I heard the gospel for the very first time mm -hmm. in my life. And Brenda, I was one tormented cat, let me tell yeah. you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my, my story parallels, for instance, Greg Laurie's a lot. Because wow. I came into the things of God in the Jesus movement way back in the, uh, the late 60s, early 70s. And he was involved in drugs, I was involved in drugs. But drugs did a lot of damage to me in a shorter period of time. And when I came to Christ in juvenile home, I heard the gospel for the very first time. I came under conviction. I followed the uh, preacher into a little private prayer room and he prayed with me. And I prayed the, the prayer of salvation, first prayer of my entire life. And uh, that night I was born again. Now, according to Colossians 1.13, when Jeff Wickwire or anybody prays that prayer of repentance and salvation, we are delivered from the domain of darkness. That's what Colossians 1.13 declares to us, that mm -hmm. God delivers us then and there from the authority, the domain, the rule of the kingdom of darkness, and he translates us into the kingdom of God's dear son. Mm. Now, that's a dynamic, we could spend days talking about that. That is a revolutionary, miraculous event mm. when a person is born again. But after that, we need our minds renewed. There you go. And this is That's huge, good. you know, because Romans 12, be not conformed to this world, but be renewed, be transformed by the renewing mm. of your mind. So once a person is saved, then the Holy Ghost within that person undertakes a lifelong process of renewal. And I personally believe it involves all kinds of deliverances along the way and, and mm -hmm. healings. And, you know, we, we come to the Lord with all kinds of stinking thinking. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're full of fears and we're full yes. of all kinds of crazy ideas. Mm -hmm. And even though our spirit man has been 100% born again, renewed, transformed, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we're a brand new person, all, the old has passed away, all has become new. That all happens in your, your spirit man. But your mind, which is the suke, is the Greek word, it's where we get psychology from, your right. mind, uh, it, it takes a lifetime of yes. renewal. And I believe when Jesus said, you'll know the truth and it'll make you free, uh, the the Mm. Verb tense there means you will ongoingly, progressively, continually know the truth. Oh, yes. Amen. And the truth will continually, ongoingly, increasingly set you set free. Set you free. So the whole thing, this is the process of sanctification, the process of the mm. renewing of the mind. Yeah. The whole thing is a lifetime project. You know, we're on God's... Uh, we're, we're, we're the, the, the pot, he's the potter, yes. we're on the potter's wheel, and we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. But it doesn't happen overnight, as right. you well know. It, it, it happens, yeah. well, if you live to be 100, it would still be going on. Amen. You'd still be opening that Bible and going, wow, I never saw that, and wow, that kind of fixes my thinking in that realm, so yeah, so it's, and that's it's an really, ongoing process. That's really both of our stories. I mean, it is an ongoing process with Christ. We're going to pack this a little more when we come back.
Paul and Brenda Crouch here. Baby, we have great plans coming yeah, we up. We do. We're here in Anaheim at our beautiful studio that God has provided, but what do we have coming up? We've got amazing content coming up that we're actually very excited about. We just finished season four, and we have plans to do some broadcasting from around the world, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, and God's opening doors for us. Amen. But they say you have not mm -hmm. because you ask not. Mm -hmm. And in four years, we have never asked for a donation or any yeah. kind of support, and now we are. It's our heart to see that media is done right and that we give God glory for everything. And we just are following the call and we're doing it honest. And uh, we hope that you will catch the vision and ride this wave with us and know Amen. that it, God is going to continue to pour more and more out as we follow in obedience to him. Amen. Go to Brenda's website. There's all kinds of resources there for giving. God bless you. BrendaCrouch.com. If you're just joining us, we're talking with Pastor Jeff Wickwire from Turning Point Church. And uh, Pastor Jeff, I'd love for you to share with us, for our viewers today, just some of the process that you've walked through with God delivering you from fear. Yeah, I, I, that's the main thing I've ever been delivered from was fear. When I came to Christ, as I shared a little bit earlier, I, I was uh, in the drug culture. And I've always said, drugs are the gateway to hell. They are the fastest road yeah. to hell that I know anything about, mm -hmm. minus the occult. However, they do have to do with the occult in the sense that even the word drug comes from the Greek word pharmakia, mm -hmm. from which we get pharmacy, but the Greek word actually means sorcery. So when right. you're talking about drugs, you're talking about something that, you know, pagan peoples who are all involved in the occult and all kinds of satanic worship and uh, witchcraft and whatnot. Drugs were often involved in their different rituals and whatnot because they opened the door literally to demonic presence. And so when I was involved in drugs, I, that really happened to me. The, the devil really got into my mind with fear. Uh, a couple of bad experiences with, mm. with bad trips on drugs. And even though I wasn't in drugs, uh, but a, really a couple of years, it was two years too long because it was long enough for me to get really, really bound. So when I came to Christ in juvenile home, um, it was a glorious experience. I remember I, I asked the guard uh, to leave the light on in my little cell when I went back to my cell because the, the preacher had given me a little striped paperback good news for modern man Bible. Wow. I'd never had a Bible. I never read the Bible. Mm. So I wanted to read it. So he left it on, the light on. And I was able to read about all the things Jesus said and did. And I had great peace that night. Wow. However, my mind was very damaged. And I mean psychologically. Mm -hmm. I had all kinds of um, irrational fears, mm -hmm. phobias, um, uh, boy, just bad stuff. And, and when I, a couple of years later, things really happened fast. Uh, I had an incredible experience with the Holy Spirit a couple of years later. And I got called to ministry when I was still a teenager. And I started preaching when I was still 19 years old. Mm. So I've been doing this a long time. I yeah. started very young, didn't really know what I was doing, but I did it anyway and gave it my best shot and God somehow blessed it. But <laughs> yeah. when I yielded to the call to preach, Brenda, it was like all hell was unleashed against oh, me yeah. in my mind. Uh, Satan just assaulted my mind. Mm. I. I just began to experience these overwhelming panic attacks, mm. um, fear day and night and night and day. <clears throat> like when Moses was warning the Jewish people, if you depart from God, you're going to be scattered to the four corners of the earth and, and it's going to be bad for you. When you go to bed at night, you're going to wish it were morning. And mm -hmm. when it's morning, you're going to wish it were evening. That's the way I was living. Because uh, every day I woke up to these crippling fears. I was trying to go to school. Uh, I had gone to junior college. I couldn't concentrate on my studies very well. Um, mm -hmm. Just every waking moment, I was faced with, with just this, this tension, these fears, battling them in my mind, 
not knowing what to do, not knowing how to get out of it, knowing very little about uh, God's answers for fear. So this went on, I hate to say it, it it's difficult to say, but it did go on for a few years, mm -hmm. this, these intense battles sure. where couldn't sleep at night. It's just bad stuff. One day, Brenda, I was praying, and a verse came into my mind that I'd read in the Psalms and, you know, skipped right past it, never thought much about it, but it came to my mind. And it is uh, Psalms 19, verse 7, and it says, The law of the Lord, now when you read the law of the Lord, that means the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Mm. Now, that just jumped into my wow. head. And so I, I went and found it, and then I looked up the word con, uh, converting in the Hebrew text, and it means restoring. Oh, so I love it. So yeah. when you read soul, yeah. soul always means your mind, your will, and your emotions. Yes. It's not your spirit man. Your spirit man is what is born again, what is regenerated mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, conversion process. But your mind is what is renewed daily. It is what uh, you renew and you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I'm reading this psalm, and David, by the Spirit, is telling us that God's Word is perfecto. It's perfect yeah. in restoring your mind, your will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start memorizing the Word. Right. And so I started memorizing it, Brenda. And again, you got to keep in mind, this was a de life and death struggle for me. Mm. Uh, this was, I was down on the mat, uh, you know, and I could almost hear, uh, you know, the referee or the devil counting over me, 10, 9, wow. 8. And so this, this was a battle. Mm. And so I started memorizing. I started with the Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And I memorized all three chapters. Then I went from there to the book of James, and I memorized the entire book of James. Mm. Then I started memorizing whole psalms, like this one right here, the 19th Psalm. Yeah, that's good. Because what I started noticing is the Word of God is medicinal. Yeah. The Word of God is, is, is you know, it, it's, it really is like a, um, an ointment that is put mm -hmm. over your thought life we could call it an antibiotic ointment yes. against the stinking think and all the fears because every fear is based on an irrational belief. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to die. I'm going to be forsaken or abandoned or whatever. Mm. And so the word has a way of going in there and erasing the old way of thinking and mm -hmm. replacing it with a new way of thinking. Yeah. So that's what happened to me. And this, you know, I did this you know, it was intensive for about a year, mm. just memorizing huge portions of the Word of God. And Brenda, one day I woke up and I, it hit me. Wow, mm. I have not dealt with that tormenting fear wow. in days. Wow. Yeah. And I, I, replacing, so it, it delivered me. Yeah. Re and replacing those thoughts with the Word of God, it also in the Scripture says that His Word is like a two-edged sword yeah uh separating bone from marrow i mean yeah. that means yeah. it gets down to the core of who we yeah. are and it will challenge yeah. us i mean it'll push us to the place where we have to face yeah. uh you know the 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 things that are causing our pain and you know what yeah. are those voices saying to me and how do i change this paradigm and and i would you say jeff that that we can cause a lot of damage if we're just calling everything a demon uh, we can actually wound people even further uh, instead yes. of using walking yes. in the discernment of, of understanding what is demonic and what is yeah. perhaps soul healing that someone needs. Yeah, because that's one of my real concerns about this whole uh, deliverance movement is this. Right. Uh, you think that it's just going to be cast out, you know, in five minutes. Yeah. And, and then <laughs> you walk away and within mm -hmm. a day or two or a week or whatever, uh, suddenly you're dealing with the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so what is the first thing you're going to think? You're mm -hmm. going to think the demon has come back. Right. And so you're in this constant hamster's wheel uh, of round and round and round of demons coming out. Okay, I'm okay for a little while. Now I'm back in the torment. Yeah. But the bottom line is 
is that your mind needs to be healed. Yes. He sent his word and healed mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. That's not just physical healing. He, Amen. he sent his word. So God sends his word into <clears throat> the inner corridors of our thought life, mm -hmm. into all of the locked away, closed mm -hmm. up chambers. You know, I think that all of us in our souls, we have all kinds of rooms and yes. some of those rooms have locks on them and, so and, good. and uh, you can't get in mm -hmm. because that's where you were hurt. That, yeah. That's where nobody's gonna get in because that's where you nurse your pain and there's no curtains in that mm -hmm. room. There's no light in that room. You know, you, you might let Jesus into all the other rooms, but mm. not that room, Lord, but that's the one right. that needs to be unlocked and he needs to be able to go into yeah. with the word of God and address it and fix your thought life, fix your worldview, fix the way you view yourself, mm. fix the way you view um, your past. You know, the Word of God, you know, I'm such a believer in, it really is, this Bible really is the spoken Word of God. Yes. And so therefore, like Jesus said, the words I speak to you they are spirit and they are life. <clears throat> Amen. And so they go in and they fix that thinking. Mm. And so, you know, it, it, have I totally arrived? Oh, no. I mean, now am I tormented right. anymore? <laughs> no, I'm not. Right. Yeah. I'm not tormented anymore. Mm. But um, I still have to deal with all kinds of things where I can go, now, wait a minute. Why am I thinking that way? Mm. Well, because that's the way I was programmed way back when. Yes. So I need the word of God to fix it. Amen. And, you know, I too have, have dealt with torment. Uh, I have had to go into those, find the courage to go to those inner rooms that you just so beautifully spoke of. And I really believe that the journey with Christ is an inward journey. It's one that will lead us to open those doors to uh, bravely and honestly, as the book of Corinthians says, we come with our faith unveiled. And mm -hmm. it's, it's through his glory, the mirror of his glory, that we are transformed. Jeff, I want to thank you for being with us today. And uh, how can everybody find you real quickly? Well, they can find me at tpcfamily.org. That's turningpointchurchfamily.org. But just tpcfamily.org or hardwired.org. That's the name of our radio program. We're on over 450 stations nationwide, all six time zones. And uh, we're on pray.com. There's so oh, many yeah. places where God has opened the door for us to go. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much for bringing your wisdom to the table today. We're going to have you again, okay? Let's do it. You bet. Thank you, Brenda, and God bless both of you. God have bless a blessed you. week. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. And to you, friends, we sure appreciate you being with us today. I hope you were encouraged and that you will continue to walk in the wisdom of the Word of God.